Hello everyone. My name is Amanda Bach. I'm with Bach Star Stamping. I am an independent stamping up demonstrator here in the United States. So if you pop on, I would love it if you'd say hi so I can say hi back and see if anyone's watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and I will try to take care of those for you. All right. Also, if you could like this video and go ahead and head on over to YouTube and give me a like and subscribe there when I um, upload it. All right. Hey, Kathy. All right. So you can see my junk here, but that's all right. You know what? We're just going to leave it. Just miss my scrap paper. Okay. So I got some new toys and I love playing with the new toys. So I just wanted to jump on it and show you some of my new toys. Yes. Okay. So we're going to be playing with the Plentiful Plants Bundle which is on page 81 of the new annual catalog, which is quite quite an awesome catalog. Um, the samples that they provide in the catalog really do an excellent job of showcasing this bundle. So a bundle, if you're asking what, what's a bundle, it's the stamps and the dies to cut it out and you save 10% if you buy them as a bundle. If you want the sweet, all the sweet is is one number, so you get all of it. So you don't have to enter in a bunch of different numbers. So if you order the suite, you get the um, the bundle, which is the stamps and the dies, the bloom where you're planted, DSP, which I'm about to show you, and this paper lattice here. So you get all of that. Plus, they don't have it listed in the suite, but there's also a macrame 3D embossing folder that um, also comes with it. And I just happen to have it right here, so I will show it to you. I always use my label maker and write on what it is and if it's 3D because that needs a different sandwich in your cut and emboss machine. Um, so we're going to be using this tonight. All right, but I want to show you this paper up close because I don't think this paper gives us um, a, as good of a picture as it should. So you can turn to 131 and it gives us a little bit better of a picture of it, but it's actually way prettier. In real life so I wanted to show it to you up close and personal now I find it funny that this designer series paper is named bloom where you're planted but this is greenery and plants there aren't blooms in it but that's okay um, I have a house plant or a house plant I have lots of house plants and um, oh it looks like a buffered there for a second let me make sure everything's okay all right, um, I have lots of house plants, and not too long ago, I actually made a macrame plant hanger for my plants, and um, I love it. So this, when I saw this um, sweet, I had to have it. All right, and hopefully I will stop buffering. I think my kids are on the internet, which is probably not helping any. Yes, well, hopefully I'll stop soon. If not, I'll just, you're going to hear me run in there and tell them to get off the internet and then I'll run back. Okay. So anyway, let me just show you the paper. Hopefully you can see it. Kathy, can you see it? All right. So these are a bunch of different house plants and you can fussy cut them out or you could just place, you know, do a, um, a certain die around. Some of these will fit. The dies in the stamp set in the bundle do cut out. Um, let's see this one. If you didn't want this top part of this, you could use the die to cut that out if you wanted to. Um, let's see, that's all on this page that it would cut out neatly anyway. I mean, you can cut it out yourself if you want. And the reverse side has some like wood planks on it. The next one, yes, love this one. The dies do cut out the um, this one, uh, these three here. Am I back? Am I back? Am I back? I told them to get off the internet. Woo! Okay. All right. So there's this page too with greenery with some leaves. And then bricks. I love this page. I've been using this one a lot. This one's fun and you can also use the dies to die cut this one as well. All right. So this one you can cut out. That one you can cut out. That one terribly easy to fussy cut. And that one be easy to fussy cut. So you can... Die cut several of these out yourself. 
which you will see in some projects I made. This one's also a wood green. Then we have the Evening Evergreen Garden Green, which I used a lot in this project. And then a brick wall. Love it. I believe that's cinnamon cider. This page, when you first look at it, you might be like, uh, what now? But if you cut it down here, you could use it as, uh, you can get several different card fronts from it and you could stamp the top. There would be plenty of room to stamp the top. So I'm gonna experiment with that one. I haven't quite played with this one yet, but I will. All right, and then this one looks like, you know, after cement or the side of your pot gets dirty and weathered. I think that's what this looks like. All right, kind of looks mildewy, which can be used in a great application. So I'm going to try my best to figure out a great way to use that. Sorry, I was picking up a piece of paper that fell. Okay, so that's that one. And I want to show you on page 155, which I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. The embossing folders page. So the macrame is here. We will also be using the brick and mortar, which is over here today. And some dies I want to show you. We are going to be using the Hippo and Friends dies. Now, when I bought these, I did buy the stamp set as well, but I mainly bought them for these layering dies, which I love and use all the time. Um, they also just happen to cut out the cute little images. And then the last one we're going to use is the Tasteful Labels dies, which is on page 166. Okay, but I want to show you something on page 128, and then I'm going to show you a card I used before we get into the one we're going to make. All right, so on 128, it shows our different masks. And this is a new one, a set of four. And I wanna show it to you up close and personal because honestly, when I looked at it in the catalog, I was like, eh, it's okay. So it comes in a four pack. And they used embossing paste here, but as you're about to see when you, when you use your blending brushes, wow. Okay, so we have this one. Come on now, come on now. Um, I think of it, it reminds me of netting. It also kind of, I think it goes well with the turtle set. Um, so lots of different ways you can use this one. Uh, this one has four different of these beautiful medallions, which you could block, you know, if you just wanted to use one off, you could mask these others and just use that one so that you don't accidentally Get on to the next one. Um, let's see, there's these little flowers, which goes very well with the In Symmetry bundle. But the one I used in the project in just a second is this one. It's kind of geometric design. And again, I overlooked it because it, they used embossing paste, but I'm gonna show you a card I just came up with the other day. Let me find it here, find the right one so I don't show you the other ones I would made because I made several. All right. So what I did here is I took that geometric um, mask and I used just jade and I used a three and three quarter by five piece of wisp, uh, basic white. And I basically, I just used my blending brush on the top half. Love these blending brushes. You can tell that's the one I used. And then I took a strip of basic white and used the mortar and brick embossing folder. And then what is this? This is just a tiny little half inch strip of um, In Good Taste Designer Series paper, which I do want to show you that one as well. It actually carried over, which Stampin' Up! doesn't often carry over Designer Series paper, but they did. And here it is. And it's got tiles and wood grains and fabric type patterns. Lovely, lovely pack of paper. And it's really big pack of paper too. And I can see there's a glare on my page. So maybe this will help a little bit. Anyway, I just took, um, I think that piece right there. And I just took a little bitty strip. No, it was that one. That one, little bitty strip. And made like a little shelf in the wall. Then this is the In Good Tastes um, die. A little note with the biggest things and then I die cut these images and put them on okay so that's this mask and I can't wait to create more with that but that's all I've done for now so I just wanted to show you that one okay moving on let's get started making something shall we 
All right, so for the card we're going to make tonight, our card base, I'm going to use Evening Evergreen, and it is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it, get it ready to go. All right, and then we're going to emboss a piece of basic white using the Macromate 3D embossing folder. And after you do, it looks like this. What I did is I took a, well, let's measure it here. Yeah, a four, uh, three and three quarters by two and a half. So this is three and three quarters by two and a half. Okay. And why I did that is because our matte layer, it will layer perfectly on that. So this is garden green, which is five and a quarter by four. And this is two and a half by three and three quarters. There we go. And then up here, no, that one's going to go up there. Down here, I cut the exact same size and stick that using my Tombow glue while I tell you about some exciting news. Um, June 30th, our current mini catalog, look, I left my glue open for like two hours ago, just a little bit ago. So it's like, I had to wipe off the tip. There we go. Um, June 30th, our current mini catalog in ends. So if there are any products in there you are wanting, um, I would go to www.stampingup.com and place your order right away because some of the items have already sold out. So you don't want to miss out on something you really, really wanted um, because you waited too long. Some great products still available. I hate covering up pattern that I actually like. Okay, I'm gonna must have not have cut it exactly right, and that is okay because I've got a little strip. Can you see I didn't cut it exactly right? There's a teeny tiny gap in there. That's all right because I have a little strip here. It is of garden green that I was gonna put there anyway. There we go. It is half inch by four. We're just gonna use that. I usually cover my seams with a ribbon or a thin strip of paper just because I don't want to see it. There we go. Then I'm going to pick it up and use my fingers on the side to make sure that it's even before I give it a good press. Okay. Whoa. There we go. Okay. Look at my example first before I move on so I don't jump ahead. No, nope, I'm good to do that. I can go ahead and glue it down onto my card base. So it's just a regular A2 card base. And then I matted it in quarter inch increments instead of my usual eighth inch, but I like the way it looked, so I did it. I wanted more of the garden green to show. Okay, so there's my basic card front. Next, let's get to stamping, shall we? All right, so here is just a scrap of basic white. I'm going to get my garden green out. And I'm gonna get the sentiment from the stamp set with a little, a little note with the biggest thanks. So that's what I have here, okay? And I want to do it um, on this side, I think. Let me look at my example. Where did it go? There it is, yes. Actually, I wanna do it over on this side. So this side, I'm gonna turn it, just to make sure I get myself enough room to die cut it. There we go, perfect. So when I die cut it, I'm going to use this die from the Hippo and Friends dies. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. And I've got some removable sticky tape that I just have a piece that I had earlier, so I'll just use it. Okay, and I want it more on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna put that right there, put it over by my, my uh, embossing slash die cutting machine, because there's more I wanna do before I run that one through the machine. Okay, next we're going to take, where did it run off to? There it is, this stamp. And I'm going to make sure I use my stamp and Pierce mat, because these are photopolymer stamps and just that little extra foam really helps to get a lovely image. There we go. Now I'm going to put this one like that. Next, I wanna get my cinnamon cider for my flower pot. And I've already got it on the back of this 
and I'm going to put it right there. Boop, there we go. Okay. And before I put this one away, I have my middle inside part, which is five and a quarter by four. And I am going to go ahead and stamp the littlest pot. And I'm gonna put him right down here. Oh, better get, why'd I put that away? Good grief, losing my mind. All right, put him right there. He's gonna live on the inside of my card. And you know what? I'm gonna do my envelope too. Might as well, I'm here. Okay, and on the envelope, 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 what do you say? Do you say envelope, do you say envelope? What do you say? I'm going to put this one right there. Perfect. And then I'm going to take this little one. I'm actually going to get my evening evergreen out for this one. There we go. And I love photopolymer stamps because I can line it right up, hopefully. You might see my head for a second, sorry. There we go. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna do that on my envelope. This is my inside. I'm gonna do it on that one as well. Yes, yeah, so pretty. Hopefully you can see my head in a second, probably. Sorry about that. Oh, I think I went a little over on this one. Eh, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, so that's my inside. And, oh, you can see my hair. Ha! Anyway, um, for my insides, I don't generally write anything on a thank you card because I wanna write something myself. So if it's a birthday card, I always put something on the inside. Okay, but that's my inside. You know what? We might as well go ahead and put it in our thing. All right, so we've got our middle. Okay, and after I show you how to make this one, I do have several more examples that I've already made that I wanted to show you. All right, so there's our inside for our thank you card. All right, so let's finish this puppy up. So. Through the magic of television, I have already die cut them out. What? And that one. And that one. Okay. So there we are. So what I'm going to do is take, um, let's use a glue dot, shall we? I think we shall. Let's use a glue dot. What I'm going to do is just on the very tippity, tippity, tip, tip, tip. And let's see if it'll come off. It might not come off, I might, there it goes, okay. Because I don't want to cover up too much of my plant when I put it in the pot. All right, uh, I gotta put it just a little bit more than that. There we go. So it looks like it's planted in the pot. You could even put the, the leaf or two in front, okay. That is going to live on my card, just like that. And I am going to glue it down because I'm going to put this layer on dimensionals and I don't want to double dimensional it because, yes, that is a word, double dimensional it, because then um, it might not fit through the post office. So, And I'm not gonna quite glue over here because it's gonna be hanging off and I don't want it getting on my thing, but I might have put too much on. So I'm gonna get my silicone craft sheet down because glue does not stick to this. There we go, put it right there. Where's my card? There, love it. Okay, yep, I have just a tiny bit of glue so that didn't get on my work surface, so that's awesome. Then I can just rub it off and it's gone. All right, we have one last thing to do and that is to put this on our card front. It's gonna live right there. Love it. Okay, so we're gonna use dimensionals. And here they are, I thought they ran away for a second. And I'm gonna leave the center bare with dimensionals because that's where my um, little words are hard today. A <sighs> little half inch strip is, and I don't wanna cover that up. Sometimes I would use ribbon right here, but I liked the paper. I did try their R ribbon, the Evening Evergreen one. And I just like, you know what, I think I like I like this better. And yeah, I definitely used a lot of dimensionals, didn't I? Alrighty. There we go. Get those off into a little pile. All right. 
Okay, I'm gonna put this on. So if you have someone who's a plant lover or a nature lover, this would be a great, a great card to make and send to them using the macrame um, embossing folder. The, come on now. Bloom where you're planted, designer series paper, and our stamps, which is plentiful plants with their coordinating dies. So that is the one I just made for you. But I want to show you my example one that I made earlier. Um, a little different, a little different. This came from the designer series paper and originally it had handles on it and I just cut them off because I can. And then I wanted it to look like it was planted. So what I did is I took my little finger blade here and I cut a small little hole and then I just put it in there a little bit using my, my finger blade. Okay, and then on the inside I did the same thing as well. Okay, there we go. So that's the one I made, but I have more. I have more. So I've shown you this one too. I put the lid on my glue so it's not sitting out for two hours like it was just a little bit ago. And I made uh, coordinating envelopes for um, them as well. So we've got that one. I did this one for this one and this one. Okay, and... This one, I got inspiration from Julie Davison. She is a fellow demonstrator here in the United States. I believe she lives in Champaign, Illinois, which is just a little bit away from me. Um, might have to catch up with her sometime. She has a Facebook and a um, YouTube channel, so check her out, and I will put her link at the bottom of this video when I am done with it. But she created this lovely kind of squash card, and you open it up, and it looks like this, right? And I know it's kind of kind of hard to see, but it can stand up completely by itself. And it's so pretty. You can, you know, even uh, bend it out a little bit so you can see the wood grain. But I love that so much. I had to give that one a try. I'm definitely going to do this one again with different, different um, papers. And then on the back, there's just a little bit of room to write. Now, if you really wanted more room, of course, you could add more panels here. Um, yeah, so it folds up like this. And it will fit in an envelope perfectly okay so it will totally mail in a regular size envelope all right so that's that one I thought that was adorable and then this one I was inspired by our catalog our catalog I love that they give us so many examples to use and sometimes when I first get a set you know I'm like oh what do I do with this I look here so I took this one because I thought this one was really pretty. Let me scoot it up a little bit so you can see. So I thought this one was really pretty. Um, but I wanted it to be a thank you card, so I didn't use the to a dear friend. But I basically did that card. Um, when I saw this die in the die set, I was like, what is that? And I've seen some other people do some different stuff with it. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't think that's what it's for. So like, you know what? It, I'm just gonna cut it out and see what it looks like to me. So I did, I'm like, oh, it's a plant stand. I have several of these. So this circular, um, well, ovalish type, half oval pot fits in there. This little slit at the top cuts the hole so you can slide the pot in there and it fits perfectly. Just so you know, that's what'll work. Then you can use this die to cut it out after you stamp it. Or you can cut it out of the paper. Yep. Okay, so I, let's see, this is from the paper. This is from the paper. That's from the paper. And the pots are from the paper and that's from the paper. So I stamped behind where I was gonna put the plants. And I think I used garden green and just jade, I think. Uh, yes, and that's what those stamped colors are. And then I die cut out the other parts and glued them on. And this is just a quarter inch little strip of cinnamon cider down here that looks kind of like a shelf. And I thought this was an adorable card. Um, it did take a little while, it did, with all the die cutting, but I thought it was totally worth it. And a lovely thank you card. And on the inside, I fussy cut one of those plants in a pot from the designer series paper. 
but I also left plenty of plenty of room to write a sentiment. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, I love this one. Um, if you like die cutting, this type of card is right up your alley. Um, and you know, if it's a special person, I don't mind spending a few hours creating a beautiful card for someone. Um, that I, I know several people who would love this one. And I do have plants. Um, I think I have 22 house plants and I have several plant stands like that. And I think what I'll do is I will pop a picture of the macrame plant holder that I made um, last summer. I, yeah, it was last summer I made it and my, I'm looking at it right now and it's holding one of my, my viney plants and it's so pretty. All right, so those are the examples I have for you. So I have five, although technically these are kind of like the same. So you know what, here's what I'm gonna do. There we go. All right, so we have these three. And then this one that stands up by itself, but I'll lay it down just so you can see it. So this is my June host code. And what that means, if you place an order with me um, and it is under $150, please use this. If it is over $150, don't use that because you will get all the host code benefits. Um, in the month of June, if you place an order with me over $50, I will send you a pack of Genial Gems, which are in the catalog, beautiful embellishment um, in July. Don't forget, June 30th, our current mini catalog ends, so make sure if there's anything in there that you are wanting, make sure you get that ASAP. All right, reach out to me if you have any questions. My email is boxstarstamping at gmail.com, and if you have any questions, you let me know, and I will try my best to answer them for you. All right, have a great evening. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.